Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall family druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist. Taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> It's Friday, and time for Phil's weekly band rehearsal. William has borrowed Phil's car, and Alice has to drive Phil downtown. As we look in, Alice and Phil are approaching their garage. I don't know why you let Willie take my car anyway, Alice. The guy's always mooching something. Well, it doesn't matter, Phil. I'm driving you down. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not too crazy about the way you handle a car. You ain't too careful, you know. Now, how can you say that? I drove you to rehearsal last week, and I did all right, didn't I? Yeah. You stayed right out in the middle of the street, and you were doing swell until you tried to squeeze between those two (laughs) streetcars. Oh, that. That car was old anyway. And besides, you managed to sell the car after the accident. Only because I was lucky. I found a guy who wanted a tall, thin Chevrolet. (laughs) Stop exaggerating. Now, get in the car, or we'll be late for rehearsal. Well, get in. What are you waiting for? Don't rush. Don't shove. (laughs) Got to work up courage first. (laughs) Stepping into this thing is like taking a cruise in a leaky submarine. (laughs) The odds are against you. Look, I'm a good driver, and you have nothing to worry about. Now, get in. Okay, okay. I know what I'm doing every minute. Now, be quiet. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. What are you doing now? <laughs> That's the only way I could tell which one of these pedals is the clutch. <laughs> it's the left one, the one I tied the ribbon on for you. <laughs> Please, Alice, will you get started? <laughs> I didn't do so badly, did I, Phil? That was a nice, smooth ride, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Look, tell me something, Alice. Did you drive a tank during the war? <laughs> Over the way, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest ride on earth. Come inside, everybody. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Look, don't ever let that brother of yours have my car again. Why doesn't Willie go back to New York anyway? He's always doing something. Now, stop something. picking on Willie. Here's the studio. Let's go in. All right, fellas. All right, fellas. Your maestro's here. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it with a holler. Hold it. Hold it, will you, lady, please? Stop that. <laughs> Keep out of that, lady. <laughs> Must be some way I can get rid of this harpus. Miss, will you please... Will you please keep that Irish piano quiet? I don't want to hear another... Phil, don't you yell at Barbara. It ain't polite to yell. Look, Artie, don't tell me not... 
Barbara? Oh, so it's Barbara now. Yeah, us guys in the band like her. It's nice having a culture tomato around. <laughs> now look, will you sit down? Go back and sit down. Now look, we're doing that's what I like about the South next Sunday, so let's run it over. Barbara wrote a new arrangement for that. You want to hear it? No, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> now go back and sit down. We're going to do it the way I always do it. Okay, fellas. One, two... Won't you come with me to Alabama? Won't you? Won't you come? Won't you come? Alabama? Hold that! Hold! It. No! No! Cut that out! No, lady! Lady! Lady, please! <laughs> Madam, you're driving me nuts. <laughs> And when I'm talking to you, get out from behind that harp. You look like you're in for 30 days. <laughs> what the heck was that? Barbara's arrangement. Barbara, oh, that does it. That, that's all. Lady, I want you to take that spaghetti stretcher and get out of here. Now, don't stand there. Go, go, go. Mr. Harris. <laughs> She talks. <laughs> Mr. Harris, for five weeks I have restrained myself in what I believe is an admirable fashion. I've tolerated your crude, tyrannical outbursts as long as I possibly can. <laughs> However, one more of your vulgar, hysterical tirades and I shall be obliged to kick you right in the teeth. <laughs> You only dare say that because you're taller than I am. <laughs> Look, lady, you know you were signed up by mistake. You agreed to release me from my contract. Why don't you be a nice girl and do it? Because your business manager, Mr. Fay, refused to allow me to go. Mr. Fay persuaded me to stay with an increase in salary. Fabulous <laughs> Willie, huh? That's <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get mad and break every one of his tiddlywinks. <laughs> Why doesn't he stick to his bookkeeping? No, 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 don't, don't get excited, Phil. Willie's coming over to the house this afternoon, and I'll talk to him. I'll run along now, and, and I'll see you back at the house. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, Alice. So long, Alice. So long, Marty. <laughs> Something's got to be done about that Willie. I know. Now look, you guys, we got a rehearsal to do, and I want you all to, fellas, stop crowding around Barbara's harp and get back to your seats. <laughs> I ain't gonna have no dame erupting my organization. Hi, Curly. And furthermore, I want to tell you all that I'm not. Well, Mr. Remley has arrived. <laughs> Only an hour late, but he's here. Yeah. I appreciate your thoughtfulness, Mr. Remley, in showing up at all. Oh, that's all right, Curly. Anytime I can do anything... <laughs> you better keep quiet. That's what you better do. You hold up a whole rehearsal, cost me a lot of money, inconvenience the guys, and you don't even give an excuse. What happened? I came in late. <laughs> I know you came in late, but why did you come in late? Why? Because I didn't get here in time. <laughs> Sometimes you ask the silliest questions, Curly. Look, Remley, I'm sick and tired of you coming in late for rehearsals, and I'm not going to stand for it. What are you hiding behind your back? What do you got in your hand? Present. <laughs> oh. Trying to get on the good side of me, huh? What do you got, Frankie? A pipe? Uh-uh. <laughs> Shirt? Uh-uh. Keychain. Uh-uh. Well, what do you got? Delphiniums. <laughs> oh, candy, huh? <laughs> These are flowers. Flowers for me? Oh, gee, Frankie. Oh, flowers. 
Nobody's brought me flowers since Alice took me out on our first date. <laughs> Why'd you bring flowers? Because Barbara likes them. <laughs> They're for her. Oh, no, no, Remley, not you. Not, look, you... I... What? I'm gonna talk to you later. Now, go sit down. I've got to go over my number. <laughs> Bill Jackson was a poor old dub who joined the Dark Town Poker Club and cursed the day he told him he would join. Oh, that money used to go like it had wings. If he held queen, someone had kings, and each night he would contribute all that call. And he said, I'm gonna play him tight tonight to be no bobtail flushes make me bite. He said, when I get some this in my hands, I'll be a peach. And he played him tight and lost his pile, and Bill got peevish after a while, so he rose, looked all around, and made this speech. Y'all see this brand new razor that I had it sharpened just a day. Now I'm coming in with my rules that I want you to follow when you play, boy. Keep your hands up on the table while you're dealing, please. Don't be slipping the maces down there in between your knees. Don't be making them signs like you're trying to tip off your hand just talking American, boy. American, so as I can understand. And don't be getting them off the bottom because, ooh, that's rough. Take five, five, then stop. That's enough. Now, when you put the uh, bet up the reds and blues, I don't like it when you're shy. Then if you get busted, go get something. I'm going to be here by and by. Pass them pasteboards, let me shuffle every time before you deal. Anything goes wrong, I want to see. I mean, uh, you ain't going to just keep playing that game according to Mr. Harley. You're going to play this game according to me. <laughs> Sitting right there in that there clan, they chanced to be a one-eyed man, and Bill kept on watching him out of the corner of his eye. The old one eye would deal, and then would cost that Bill another five or ten. Bill got up again, looked all around him with a sigh. He said, Lord, it's an awful shame. Said, someone's cheating in this year game. Said, Coach, uh, it ain't gonna do for me to name the guy. I refrain from mentioning the party's name. If I catch him cheating just once again, I'm gonna take this fist and close that other eye. Now, do you see this brand new razor? I had it sharpened just a day. I'm coming in with my rules that you must follow when you play egghead. Keep your bony hands up there while you're giving them out, please. Don't be slipping them wildies down there in between your knees. Don't be making them funny signs because you're still trying to tip off your hand. You better talk an American big A, 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 so as I can understand. And stop getting them off the bottom. I'm trying to tell you it's rough. This is the Army game. Five, five, uh, halt. That's enough. Now, when you bet, put up the reds and blues. I don't like it when you're shy. And if you run out of gas, go get pumped up. I'm going to be here by and by. Pass them pasteboards, let me ripple every time before you deal. Anything goes wrong, I'd love to see. But I keep telling you, you ain't going to play the game now, according to that Mr. Hoyley. You're going to play this game according to me. Now, Henry, if you'll break the seal on that new deck of bicycles, we'll get on from here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How'd that sound, Frankie? Your vibrato was a little strange. <laughs> What's bothering you, anyway? What's bothering me? Willie's bothering me. What's always bothering me? Willie, Willie, Willie. The guy's doing all... He's doing everything he can to make my life miserable. I never want to see him again. Frankie, do me a favor. Give me an idea. How can I get rid of Willie permanently? Get rid of him permanently? That's right. <laughs> Curly, it's not nice to have thoughts like that. <laughs> Besides, Willie's all right. He never tries to hurt anybody. Oh, no? I got news for you, kid. For two months, he's been after Alice to get you off the show. Get me off? That's right, you off. How about dipping him in cement and dropping him in the river? <laughs> Frank, I didn't mean to dip him in cement or anything that it's... How many bags would we need? <laughs> We could take them down at... Nah, Frankie, don't get gruesome. <laughs> you can't blame me when a guy's trying to do me out of my job. I ain't nobody gonna do you out of a job with me. I need you on this show. Don't worry about it. In fact, in this coming Sunday script, you've got most of the comedy lines. You'll be the funniest one on the show this week. This week, he said. <laughs> Curly, you're the star of this show, but it must burn you up on Sunday when I get all the laughs. Yeah. 
But the fire's put out on Monday when I get all the money. <laughs> I want you to know one thing. Just because I'm nice to you, don't think oh, that you can... Oh, there you are, Mr. Harris. Uh, uh, here comes Mr. Stevens. Who's he? He's the sponsor's representative. Now, be nice to him. All right, I'll be nice to him. Just because he's the sponsor's representative. I got to cater to That's him. That's right. I'm glad to see you're still here. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Stevenson? I'm glad to see you. Look, uh, Mr. Stevenson, this is uh, Mr. Remley. Well, how do you do, Mr. Remley? Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Being nice enough. Don't to overdo it. it. <laughs> uh, what's on your mind, Mr. Stevenson? Well, I just dropped by with the commercials for this Sunday's show. Oh, goody. <laughs> yum, yum. We were afraid we weren't going to get them. Uh, they're, uh, they're a little longer than usual, Mr. Harris. I hope you can get all the commercial in. Don't plan on it. <laughs> what was that? Uh, well, you see, I'm going to have most of the comedy lines in next Sunday's show, and uh, I'll get a lot of laughs. So we may not have time for the commercial at all. That is ridiculous, Mr. Remley. What is a radio program without a commercial? Let's try it and see. Why? <laughs> Will you keep quiet? This man is from the checks every week, the cow that makes with the moo. Mm. Now, quiet. Of course, uh... Certainly. We're going to have the commercials, Mr. Stevenson. Okay, we'll try it. I think you'll find the commercials exceptionally interesting this week. I hope so. What are you going to talk about? Rexall. <laughs> Again? <laughs> you did that last week. The week before. What's the matter with you guys? You got a one-track mind? Rim. <laughs> Mr. Harris, you don't mind doing our commercials, do you? Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> Perish the thought. <laughs> I listen to him every week, and I know him by heart. I know you can depend on any product that bears the name Rexall. There are over 10,000 independent Rexall drugstores, and you can recognize a Rexall store just like that by their famous pink and purple sign. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harris. The colors of the Rexall sign are orange and blue. Well, stupid old me. <laughs> orange and blue? Oh, beautiful color scheme, isn't it, Frankie? I like pink and purple. Quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry I forgot the colors, Mr. Stevenson, but I promise you that it'll never happen again. Well, I hope not. Oh, it won't. And to make sure, I'm going home and dye my kids one orange and one blue. <laughs> I think he'd do it, too. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Harris. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to run along. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Stevenson. Why don't you stick around and then you come home to dinner with me? Well, thanks, but I'm too busy. You see, I'm looking for a man to head the bookkeeping department in our Canadian store in Vancouver. You wouldn't happen to know of a capable man, would you, Mr. Harris? No, I wouldn't know nothing about no Kate. Uh, bookkeeper? <laughs> Descent of Vancouver, Canada? 2,000 miles away? William! <laughs> you know somebody? Know somebody? Deed I do. <laughs> Deed I do. My brother in law, Mr. Fay. Oh, yes, I have met Mr. Fay. Yes, he seems like a very competent man. Does he have a good business head? Two of them. <laughs> One pink and one purple. <laughs> Mr. Stevenson, may I tell you that Willie's been handling Alice's money for years? I guarantee inside of six months, he'll have Rexall almost as rich as Alice. <laughs> well, why don't you send him over to see me this afternoon, Mr. Harris? He might be just the man I'm looking for. Good day. Goodbye. Hey. We're shipping Willie off to Canada. Yeah, what a wonderful way to get rid of somebody that's always getting in your hair. And it... Hey, Mr. Stevenson. Yes? Can you use a tall, thin harp player up there, too? <laughs> Wait a minute, Curly. Don't try to Shanghai oh, Barbara. Right. Never mind, Mr. Stevenson. Come on, Frankie. Let's go home and talk Willie into taking this Vancouver job. But remember, don't tell Alice where it is. Yeah. She'll know we're trying to get rid of him and queer the whole thing. Right. Oh, <laughs> Getting Willie off the Vancouver. Canada. Vancouver. <laughs> hey, look. What? Let's go home and be very nice to Willie. Remember, very nice.
Now, William, from now on, don't do or say anything to antagonize Phil. I'm merely trying to help him. Now, please, please. Please, please. When Phil comes home, do me one favor. Don't greet him the way you always do. That burns him up more than anything else. You mean I shouldn't say, Good morning, Philip. <laughs> Good morning, William. Oh, oh, Philip, I didn't hear you come in. Now, Phil, Phil, control yourself. Well, he wasn't saying that to you. He didn't mean to. I, I... Oh, hello, Frankie. Good morning, Alice. <laughs> and why shouldn't Willie say that to me? My day isn't complete until I've heard it. I'd give anything to hear it just once more. Good morning. Not Phil. you. <laughs> Alice, did you ever stop to realize? Did you ever just, just realize how lucky you are to have a brother like this? You think I'm lucky to... Phil Harris, have you been... Not a drop. <laughs> first time, I just realized how wrong I've been about Willie. You mean you like him? Like him? I think he's just ginger peachy. <laughs> Willie, sit down. I got something to tell you. Now, look, take my favorite chair over there. But, Philip, you always get angry. Uh, 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 I... Now, don't argue, Willie. Come with me. Come right over here and make yourself just as Phillip, comfy. Philip, put me down. <laughs> What are you and Frankie up to, up to this time? Well, that's gratitude. What are you up to? What are you up to? That's gratitude for you. After I go out of my way to get Willie a wonderful job with Rexall. Are you serious? Certainly I'm serious. All he's got to do is to go down and see Mr. Stevenson, sign up, and he's all set. Oh, Willie, isn't it wonderful? You've always wanted to work for them, and now it's come true. Oh, Willie, I'm so happy for you. Alice, I'm put so... me down! <laughs> I wish you people wouldn't get so exuberant. Hey, Willie, stop all of that, and you'd better run downtown and see Mr. Stevenson right away. Oh, now hurry up. Thank you, Philip. I'll go down right now. I'll return here and let you know as soon as I've talked to Mr. Stevenson. Phil, I don't know why you're doing this, but I think it's sweet of you, and I appreciate oh, it. Oh, it was nothing. No, no, just the same. You've made me very happy. You were meant for me. For you, nature patterned you, and when she was done, you were all the sweet things rolled up in one. You're like a plain new melody that never lets me free. For I'm content, the angels must have sent you. And they meant you just for me. You were, you were meant for me. Curly, Willie's been gone over two hours. It must have the job by now. Yeah, just think in no time, little Willie will be 2,000 beautiful miles away. Oh. I hope he gets a job. If anything happened Alice? to keep... Philip, I'm back. Where are you? It's him. Hey, we're in here, Willie. Oh, Philip Franklin. Guess what? I got the job. Congratulations, Mr. Harris. Elementary, my dear Remley. <clears throat> <laughs> Philip, I want to thank you for what you You haven't done. got time, Willie. Look, I'll go home with you and help you pack your bag. But, Philip, Frankie, that... you go down and get him a train ticket and... Wait a minute. The train ain't fast enough. We'll send him by plane. <laughs> Let's shoot him out of a cannon. <laughs> Philip, will you please listen? William, I have... Just a minute. William, did I hear you say you got the job? Oh, here it comes. Yes, I got it, Alice. Mr. Stevenson was wonderful. He had an opening in Vancouver. Where? Vancouver. Vancouver? Vancouver? Van Johnson? <laughs> 
thought I'd break up the monotony. Just a moment. I'm beginning to see the light. Willie, do you mean they're sending you to Vancouver, B.C.? British Columbia? Of course not, honey. The job is in Vancouver, B.C., beside Cucamonga. <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself railroading William to Canada. Oh, Rexall isn't sending me to Canada. They're not sending you to Canada. Oh, no, Philip. No, due to your excellent recommendation, they're sending their local man to Vancouver, and I'm taking his place in the Los Angeles office. I feel faint. <laughs> I feel faint. Yeah, when Mr. Stevenson found out I was your business manager, Philip, he arranged it so I could handle both jobs. He didn't think it was fair to take me away from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phil, you're terrific. Because of you, Willie will still be with us. I think it's wonderful. I think it's grand. I think I'll kill myself. <laughs> Phil and Alice will be back in a minute. Now, listen to an important question. Because you're a family druggist, and because I'm the mother of a family, I'd like to know why you recommend Rexall drug products. <laughs> to answer that, ma'am, I'd like to tell you a little story. Some years back, if the world's physicians and surgeons ran want ads for the thing they need, you might have seen one that read something like this. Wanted a new adhesive formula, medicated to lessen dangerous and painful skin irritation, but still having all the stick to of regular adhesive tape. Now, there wasn't such an ad, of course, but there was such a problem. And Rexall's men of science cooperated with some of the country's leading doctors in tackling it. Today, ma'am, at every store with the orange and blue Rexall sign in the window, you can buy Rexall Pro-Cap adhesive plaster. Yes, years of careful and thorough research in Rexall's big laboratories have given to the public a tape that not only sticks better and stays put longer, but is less irritating than ordinary adhesive plaster. Now, that's just one example, but we family druggists know that every one of the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company get that same kind of patient, accurate research and testing. And that's why you recommend them to your customers. Yes, ma'am. You see, we Rexall druggists know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Well, Frankie. Yeah? Thought we had a surefire scheme, but we certainly messed it up, didn't we? 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 What do you mean, we? Don't be so plural. <laughs> happens to be one thing I didn't get you into. The fact that Willie's still with us is all your fault. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, there's only one thing I can do. Frankie. Yeah? How much cement did you say we'd need? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Curly. You said yourself that was too gruesome for Willie. It ain't for Willie. This one's for me. <laughs> This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Sally Creighton, John Beale, and Ollie O'Toole. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. Sunday is fun day on NBC. Stay tuned to this station for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy Show, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.